Hi, my name is Elise. We'll be talking now about the experiment on gravimetric analysis of a chloride salt. You'll start by getting a salt sample which has a number on it. That is because these are unknown salts with different percentages of chloride by mass. You'll need to record the sample number so that at the end of the lab, your TA can give you the accepted uh, percentage of chloride in the salt and you want to make sure you get the right number. The first part of the experiment will be to weigh out a sample, one for you, one for your partner, of your salt. Use the analytical balances at the back of the lab benches and put the vial on the scale, remove some of the salt from the vial into a 250 ml beaker once you have the initial mass of the vial, put the vial back on, take the difference in the two masses of the vial to find out how much salt you've removed. You want between 0.1 gram and 0.15 grams of the salt. You will then dissolve the sample in about 100 mL of water and have your TA add 1 mL of 6 molar nitric acid uh, so that you will completely dissolve your sample. Based on how much salt that you uh, measured, you will be determining how much 0.1 molar uh, silver nitrate you need to add to precipitate out all of the chloride. So you'll measure that out using a graduated cylinder and then add it to your dissolved salt and you'll see this white precipitate form. This is your silver chloride, which is very minimally soluble in water. So once that's formed, you will start to heat it up on a hot plate. You want to heat it up so that these very small particles will come together, coagulate, and clump together so that when you filter your salt, it will not pass right through the filter. So you're going to heat it with some gentle stirring every now and then. Remember not to stir it too much because the salt is photosensitive and will decompose in light. You want to get it to the point where the salt is clumped on the bottom of the beaker and you can see through the supernatant uh, liquid to the other side of the beaker. All right, we've been heating for a few minutes, but you can see there are some clumps on the bottom, but the supernatant liquid is still very cloudy. So we want to keep heating it without bringing it to a boil until that liquid is almost clear. When the supernatant liquid is clear or almost clear, you just need to check that you've added enough silver nitrate to precipitate out all of the chloride. You'll use a little bit more silver nitrate to make sure that you've precipitated out all of the chloride ions. So you will take a dropper and watch as you're adding a few drops to the supernatant liquid to see if any uh, more precipitate forms where you're dropping it. If you don't see any, you added enough silver nitrate to begin with and you're ready to stop heating it, remove it from the hot plate, and put it in your drawer to cool off so that it's not exposed to light. It takes on a bit of a purple color when it is uh, decomposing in light. Remember to only open the desiccator when you're taking out one of the crucibles or putting it back in so that you maintain the dry environment inside. Handle them carefully with a tissue Take the mass of each crucible and on the label, make sure that you number it or put something on it so you can tell which one was which. You need to know the mass of the crucible that you're using and the mass of the one that your partner uses uh, so that you know which salt sample went into each crucible. When you are ready to start uh, filtering, when you've taken the mass, you'll set the crucible onto the filtration apparatus and ask your TA for help in getting this set up and in how to use it. In this case, I'm demonstrating how to filter one sample. So I've plugged the other side, but normally you just would put the second crucible on this side here. When you are ready to start filtering, you just turn on the tap that's attached to your vacuum filtration apparatus and that will create a vacuum so that as you're pouring your salt and the solution into the crucible, it will suck the solution through. You want your sample to be uh, fairly cool when you get started. The first step is to decant the liquid through the filter. 
This means you want to get the liquid into the, through the filter, but keep the, most of the precipitate still in the beaker. This is so that it will go a little bit faster um, if you're filtering just liquid, and uh, so that we can rinse the precipitate before transferring it to the filter. So in order to decant, you will hold your glass stir rod across the mouth of the beaker like this and pour down the stir rod into the crucible. The stir rod will help prevent the bulk of the precipitate from going onto the crucible and will then um, allow us, like I said, to rinse the precipitate in the beaker when we're done. So you will continue to decant until all of the supernatant liquid has been filtered. So some of the precipitate did go onto the filter, uh, but most of it is still in this beaker. The next thing that you'll be doing is rinsing the precipitate with some dilute nitric acid to ensure that the coagulated or the larger pieces of the salt do not break back up into the uh, colloid, so the very small particles. So you'll be adding just a few mils of nitric acid to the precipitate in the beaker to wash it. You will decant through the filter one more time. And then you add a few more milliliters of nitric acid to the salt. And this time, we actually want to transfer the salt into the filter. So this rubber piece on the end of the glass stir rod is called the rubber policeman. With the nitric acid and the rubber policeman, we will transfer the precipitate onto the filter. If you need uh, some help getting the precipitate onto the filter, you can also use some water from your wash bottle to uh, add some water to the beaker and to help you move it onto the filter. At this point, we want to uh, test that any excess silver has been removed from the precipitate because if excess silver is present uh, in the, if light is also, uh, if the salt is exposed to light and there's excess silver, it can break down the salt even further. So you will add some water to the uh, filter and you'll be having to check the water that actually drips through the filter, drips through the salt. Ask your TA for help at this point. Um, you'll be simply testing the water by adding a few drops of hydrochloric acid. So as a source of chloride ion, if there was any excess silver dripping through the crucible, you would see a precipitate form as more silver chloride is formed in the washings. If nothing is formed, there's no excess silver, and you're ready to do the final rinses of the salt on the filter. That is just with three times five mils of acetone. And when you're done that, all the liquid's gone through the filter, you are ready to turn off the vacuum, put your crucible back into the desiccator so that you can carry it over to the oven and have a TA help you put it into the oven to dry. Uh, ideally, you would like to dry it for as long as possible before you need to leave the lab. You need to record how long you heat it in the oven for, the temperature of the oven, as well as how long you let it cool in the desiccator before you take the mass of the crucible with the precipitate to see how much precipitate um, you actually got. You would like to dry it so that two successive readings of mass of the silver chloride are no different uh, than one milligram.